Let's talk a little bit about your approach to the look and feel of American Factory, because that's something that jumps out pretty quickly to to a lot of people who will watch this, is in many ways... uh, in many ways, the cinematography itself is very, very beautiful. And I'm curious what your approach to the overall look and feel of American Factory was and what those discussions were like between you and Julia. Well, thank you for saying that. It matters to us a lot. The, we, we care a lot about, even yeah. though we we make ostensibly like social issue films or films that deal with, you know, big tectonic plates shifting in the world we always want the films to be cinematic and to be beautiful and to be uh well you know the craft of ed of the editing the craft of the cinematography of the sound design of the score all that and you know and then as we went on we realized this is going to be a film with multiple points of view yeah it's going to be Chinese perspective and American perspective. It's the beautiful, rich complexity of the film, having both of these cultures represented in this fashion. It made me, you know, ecstatic to know that we were going to get both points of views. And um, it's really what makes American Factory the film that it is. Yeah, thank you. Let's fast forward now to to February, and uh, you know what I'm going to ask you. There's no way I can can't not ask this, but I'm hopeful that that you'll answer this really truly from the perspective of, you know, what does it feel like as a documentary filmmaker, right? What does it feel like to be recognized on such a stage as something like the Academy Awards? So if you wouldn't mind, Stephen, can you walk us through, literally walk us through the moment when it's announced that that American Factory has won Best Documentary? What are some of the first thoughts that you have as you walk up? Well, funny enough, it's sort of an overwhelming moment and there's a practicality to it that kicks in that suppresses your ability to appreciate the moment because on a practical level, you have to stand up and then you have to step into the aisle. And then, you know, I put out my arm and Julia loops her arm through her left arm through my right arm. And then with her right arm, she has to bundle up her dress. So she literally does not fall down. And then we have to step one step, two step. And, you know, I'm trying to sort of re um, replay that moment. It's like you go into a mode of practical uh, necessity of what you have to do now because you've got to get on that stage and say your say your fleeting remarks, you know. Um, so, uh, it, I mean, it's an overwhelming moment, and I, it really didn't hit me till we we got backstage, and 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 that because then because then you know like we didn't fa- trying not to fall down, literally trying not to fall down on the way up to the stage, and then trying to finish our speech before the music swelled was our sole job mission purpose in that moment, you know, and then any kind of appreciation of the moment or gratitude or um, reckoning of what that meant would come later, you know, on a very, and I'm not kidding. It's just, you realize you have to, you have to do that. But as soon as we got backstage, I felt like this huge, huge wave of gratitude I couldn't, it, it, it's hard to put in the words, but, um, talk, talk about that, share that gratitude with us. You know, Julia has been making films for 50 years and she's dedicated her life to telling stories of working people and of women and of struggles for, for folks to have a better life who are not rich or powerful or famous. And I've been making films for, you know, almost 40 years. Mm-hmm. And, to have um, – and we poured we poured our hearts into American Factory. We really – it became an obsession for us that lasted years. I mean we, we, we knew it was a big story. We could feel it was a big story. And as that feeling grew, so did our sort of level of obsessive dedication and uh, constant – filming and constant pouring in of the energy to try to tell that story. I mean, to the point that I had a, I had a good uh, college teaching job, but American factory got to be so big that I had to quit that job to make the film 
and which was a very painful, yeah. hard decision to make. But ultimately, I, I felt like I had to um, the film had to come first in a in a way that um, was I you know ultimately I think it was the right thing to do although it was very disruptive and and, and caused a lot of trouble. We just poured it on for years and years making that film. We were so exhausted um, by the time we finished it. And, and of course, Julia is, has been and is fighting cancer at the same time. I mean, that's why she had no hair there uh, on, the, uh, on the Oscar stage because right. um, she had just been doing chemo. And um, so, so all these factors, the years and years of making films, the hard work that this particular film had demanded of us, um, just in the shadows, being backstage, you just it just hits you. It's like this is um, an acknowledgement from our our comrades in the documentary world, from our community, uh, from the larger world that this that that we had done a good we had done good, you know, and. Uh, I mean, it's something I'll carry with me forever, yeah. you know, that, that deep feeling of gratitude. It, it, um, yeah, and good fortune, you know. Thank you for sharing that. Stephen, I can't thank you enough for taking this hour out and, uh, and spending this time with us here in the documentary life. Oh, Chris, thanks for having me. And thanks for, you know, seriously, thank you for doing this podcast and sharing all, these, all this uh, good advice with everybody. Don't forget, we'd love to have you join us in the Documentary Academy. Come and take a look at how we can help you make your best documentary film at thedocumentarylife.com slash academy. That's thedocumentarylife.com slash academy. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon.